My friends, welcome to this tutorial about creating games with Solaris. Today we will see how to make a simple mechanism. Um, so it will be a switch that activates something in a dungeon. In this example we will um, create a chest, a treasure chest when uh, the player walks on the switch. So. Um, how to do that and it will be a nice uh, example, a nice introduction of uh, small map scripting. So uh, you can create a switch entity here uh, with this button add switch and as always you have uh, some name uh, coordinates you can show a sprite or not. Um, for a switch we will probably show a sprite otherwise it would be uh, not so nice to the player. Let's pick for example this one. Um, then you have a subtype. It defines how the switch activates basically. Uh, walkable it means that you can walk on it and it will activate when the hero is um, more or less overlapping the switch. Another type is solid, uh, which means you cannot traverse it, but you have to uh, hit it with some weapon, like typically the sword. And the third one is error target. This is more for um, legacy reasons that it still exists. Um, it's it was useful back when Solaris um, only had built-in bow and arrows, and uh, when it was not possible to implement those in Lua. So it still exists for compatibility reasons, but you probably don't need that. Anyway, in this example we will make a standard workable switch. You can also define if you want a sound to be played when the switch is activated. And there are more advanced options. Um, do you want it to be activated normally with the hero working on it, or does it require a block like like a statue to be activated so in Zelda Link, a Link to the Past you, you have a lot of these and do you want the switch to stay activated or to deactivate when leaving the switch um, okay let's don't use these these two options for now but keep the switch quite standard this way and see what happens already Okay, so the switch just changed from state uh, inactivated to state activated. And nothing else because we did not define any action yet to say, to state what, to, to, yeah, to decide what happens uh, when the mechanism is triggered. There is nothing in the UI that says what happens except playing a sound, but the real uh, mechanism will be defined in pure Lua, uh, as we will see in just a second. But first I, I want to show you the sprite here. Um, so we picked this one, switch 2. Any switch sprite uh, should have two animations, activated and inactivated. And the engine will automatically show the appropriate one depending on the state of the switch. Um, so that's basically what happened here. The, the, the animation switched from um, inactivated to activated. Yeah. Uh, okay, cool. Now let's create a chest, a treasure chest when the switch is activated. And to do that we will edit the map script. So there we go. We already uh, saw some basics about map scripting. Um, but I will explain again. We need to we need to give a name first to this uh, switch to be able to find it from our script. Uh, we call we can call it, for example, switch A. Let's say, uh, assuming that we are making a map, a real dungeon where with maybe several switches on the same map. Why not? Uh, what's important if, is to give it a name, and then we can. Now that it has a name, it does exist as a variable here with that exact name in our map script. So switch A on activated. Um, 
if you check the documentation of switches, um, there are not many functions, but the most, most important thing is this event on activated, which is called when the switch is turned on. It's a bit like similar to NPCs. They have one main event uh, on interaction that happens when we talk to the, the NPC, to the non-playing character. So for switch, this is the main event that you need. Most of the time, you don't really need the rest. And now we just define what happens when this event is called. And let's decide to play a sound. Uh, chest appears. And then we will actually make the chest appear, but let's already check that. It worked! So again, this is an event. It start by on, and it means that it's not you who will who have uh, who has to who have to call um, the function. It's Solaris that calls uh, calls it automatically for you when when it exists. Uh, it calls it automatically for you when the hero activates it. Uh, cool. So now let's actually create our chest. Um, it would be possible to really create it from here in pure Lua. Uh, if you are curious, you would do that with map create uh, chest. You have some creation functions for all type of entities, but map create chest and, and then you would have to provide all properties of your, of your treasure chest from code. But there is, there is a an easy trick to to do that with less with much less code you can actually create your chest in the quest editor but just it will just uncheck this initial state enabled at start here and that's pretty much it you will have a chest but it will be completely hidden and uh, it, it it will not be displayed it will not collide it will not interact so let's let's still create uh, a normal chest with some sprite with some treasure. I want to give the second tunic, the, the second uh, yeah armor tunic of the game here. So variant two. Probably we will need to save it in some variable. Um, I like to prefix my my save game variable names with the name of the map um, just to avoid any clash any name clash between the save state of this chest and some other chests on, on, on th some other maps so first map tunic chest for example it's the state of the chest the open state of the chest will be saved in this boolean variable in the same game file um, okay for now I will actually enable it at start just to be able to test it. Yay, I got the tunic. And now I have a sprite with a nice uh, blue color. Uh, cool. So the trick is to not enable it at start. I just define all my properties through the UI here, rather than uh, through code. That was the trick, and um, so okay. I, I I want to test it. Yeah, the chest is not here because now it's not enabled. I can actually walk uh, at the same place uh, of of the chest. And when it is when we activate the switch, we want the chest to appear, which means we need also a name for the chest, tunic chest. set enabled true so this function t um, set enabled is available on all types of entities uh, you have it in the doc in the documentation um, <laughs> somewhere set enabled here 
OK. So we don't have to call set enable false when the map starts. I mean, we could, but uh, we did it already by unchecking that. And now if we press the button, cool, the chest is here. OK, and now the chest is open. Um, the only thing is that when you leave the map and come back, or if you save the game and come back, um, the map state, it, it will be a new copy of the same map. So everything will be uh, initialized again. And the chest is, uh, yeah, is of course disabled again. And the button is also uh, not triggered yet because it's a new copy of the same map. It's the same map, but it's a new instance. Um, which means we have to do some code to avoid a situation where we could make the chest appear again. So even if it's not really a big deal, because the chest itself was saved in this save game variable, which means when we enable it again, it is enabled, but as already open. So we are not getting the same tunic twice. It will be strange because I'm already wearing the tunic. Um, but still, I would like that when I come back to the map, um, that the button is already triggered and that the chest is already here. So to do that, what, what I can do is that when the map starts and to say when the map starts, there is an event map unstarted. So map is my map object here, uh, which is actually the parameter of the map script. Um, and map unstarted, you can also check the documentation here. It's called when initializing the map before the player can even see anything on the screen uh, related to that map. So we have time here. Uh, to actually set the chest enabled if it is open. So my chest is called tunic chest and there is a function is enabled, um, is open, sorry. There is also a function is enabled, but we know it will always be false when starting the map because we did uncheck this checkbox. But even when it, when it, when it is in a, um, disabled, we can test its properties. So if it was open, then, uh, well, we enable it again. And while we are here, we will also uh, change the state of the switch. So switch A set activated there is a function set activated to silently change the state of the uh, button and i think we should be good with with that okay let's open the chest get the tunic let's leave and come back and this time okay we see the chest, we see the uh, switch with state already activated. That's what we wanted. So cool, it works. Um, and when you are doing this kind of things, don't forget to test everything that is possible because, for example, you could activate the switch but leave the map. And then you have to uh, start it all over again which is actually fine, I think. But if you want, you could uh, slightly change the code to say to to save the state of the switch itself separately from the state of the chest so that if you leave and come back, uh, if you, I mean, press the button, leave immediately and come back, um, if you want the button to still be in a, um, 
to still be activated and the chest to be available and then you have to make some code it's not really hard you, you really can do it if you want and we can help if you encounter any trouble um, yeah because here everything is really reinitialized uh, when we restart the map unless we actually open the chest um, there will be another way to to test this um, actually when I when I recorded the French version of this tutorial I first wrote game get value to test the boolean variable here first map tunic chest and it's exactly equivalent to to what I had uh, before to, to what I just wrote before which was um, tunic chest is open because whether the chest is open is equivalent to the state of this boolean variable first map tunic chest this same save game variable so it's really as you prefer I like this one better because it's easier you don't have to remember the name of a, of a, of a, of a survey of a save game variable sorry uh, so I think it's this version is more error prone but you could also uh, consider that this version is a bit weird because the tunic chest is disabled but we still test it and it's, it still works um, maybe you can consider that this is counterintuitive and then you you might prefer this version here um, anyway it's a matter of, of taste do as you, as you as you prefer and I hope in any case that this was understandable enough and if not and also if yes uh, feel free to join our discord and to talk uh, with the community about Solaris thank you all for watching and see you next time bye